welcome again, boys and girls, to another episode of George and Willie's World. My name is Mrs. Mapes. This is Mrs. Kranz. And we have Willie and George. And we're glad that you are a part of our TV show today. We have another exciting episode. And, and today we're going to be talking about t the TV TVs and production and, and how to act and, and what it takes to do all those things. But before we visit our, our guest, we want to ask Mrs. Krantz what she's been doing. What have you been doing, Mrs. Krantz? Well, the weather's been really strange. It's been raining a lot and it's been cold. And so in between the rain, George and I go out for walks and sometimes we get very, very wet, but George doesn't mind. She really likes to go for a walk. Mm -hmm. So we've been going for walks and um, playing with her in the house, thinking of games and things we can do to get some rid of some of her energy. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the boys and girls are <laughs> having the same problems at home. Have you been going, you haven't been going to the school or to the library, Madeline mm -hmm. Helling Library, lately? No, we've been on break and we start again. Uh, we're going to school tomorrow and then George will be at the library on Wednesday. We took a little winter break. Oh, so if you'd like to see George, at the Madeline Helling Library in Nevada City. She starts tomorrow, what time? She starts Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday from 4 to 5, four and to she's five. there every Wednesday. Great. I hope you, have you had any guests to come and visit? Well, no one said that they've come because of George and Willie's uh, World, but we're still waiting. Good. And Willie has also been taking many, many walks. Um, but Willie being a larger dog, when he goes out and he gets all wet, he loves the snow, he loves getting wet and taking his walks. And it usually takes at least one or two big towels to get him dried off before he can come in the house. So he has lots of hair and he gets really wet. <laughs> Does it take many towels for George? Just one towel Just for one. George. <laughs> and the blow dryer. <laughs> uh -huh. So today we're going to be talking about where we film George and Willie's World. And it's at a place called NCTV. It's in Nevada City. And we happen to have the executive director who runs NCTV right here with us today. His name is Lou Sitzer. Hello, Mr. Sitzer. Hi, Mrs. Mapes. How are you? It's a pleasure to see you. I am so <laughs> glad that you are with us today. Now, Mr. Sitzer is usually in the sound booth. Do you call it a sound booth? Control room. Control room. Right. And he controls all of... Well, all the pictures that you're seeing now are ones that are taken from a number of different cameras. So this uh, one camera is now taking a, a shot of me. Uh, but we can go to another camera, and as you see that this is a wide shot. Mm -hmm. We have so many different cameras. We have four different cameras. So as I talk and you see uh, the picture changing, that's because somebody is switching it. Mm -hmm. And today we have Terry Hecklin uh, doing my job uh, as switching, and we have uh, Nolan on sound and uh, Marilyn uh, on the character generator and we'll go through this we'll go through all the different jobs there are at a television station we also have four volunteers who are each behind a camera at the studio so there are a lot of people that uh, make a show possible and uh, with Nevada County Television NCTV all of the people are volunteers uh, and as are Mrs. Mapes and Mrs. Krantz and even uh, George and Willie are volunteers. <laughs> and volunteers mean that you don't get paid. You do it because you like to do it and you don't expect anything in return except maybe a smile. And the, the gratification, the happiness, the joy, the fun of doing a television show for young people. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, I'm, an, I'm excited about. Uh, George and Willie has always been my favorite show. <laughs> Uh, because uh, it's dedicated to young people who are at home, uh, who are in the process of learning to read, growing up, and uh, of course, I used to be a teacher. That's what I understand. And you taught? I taught mostly at high school, uh -huh. and uh, I taught history, 
<clears throat> and government and economics and photography and video and math and music and the list goes on because um, it's just fun to learn. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we enjoy about George and Willie's show is, is how much learning, and of course you're a teacher as well. Yes, third grade. Mm -hmm. And you go into the school and help the teacher right. with the reading. Yes. So we're all teachers. Yes. And actually, that's uh, when I came to do the television program, uh, television station, I actually saw uh, TV as just having the same thing as being a teacher, but a bigger audience. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we're hoping that some of the young people who are watching might actually come to the television station. That was what we were going to ask probably a little later, boys and girls, if you're interested in coming to the NCTV George and Willie's world, would you'd like to be in the audience, or maybe if your family has a special craft that they would like to share on the George and Willie's world, please write us or email us, and I'll give you those addresses later on in this show. But right now, we have a few things. I want to start by saying, in order to make George and Willie's world all of us have a job to do, whether it's a camera or um, sitting up here and knowing what we're going to say. And we also, if, if you notice, boys and girls at home, we have these little black things on our collars of our shirts. And if you look at any other shows, you'll see that they have these things too. They are called speakers or Mic microphones. 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 <laughs> and what that does is it, well, why don't you explain what a microphone is? <laughs> well, actually, Mrs. Mapes has a special kind of microphone. It's called a wireless microphone, and it plugs in um, through batteries to our receiver, and she can walk around the station. She can, um, she can transmit sound from anywhere uh, close by, and so uh, that gives her more mobility, more uh, the idea that she can walk around, whereas Mrs. Kranz and I have stationary microphones that are wired. So we actually, we actually are wired in so you can see that we have sound um, connection to the control room and that gives us reliability. So if Mrs. Mapes' uh, microphone goes out in the middle of the show, you'll know that the battery has worn out. And that sometimes happens where we lose sound and uh, that's why we like to be plugged in and wired so that we make sure that the sound is good. Mm -hmm. And how did you make the change from being a teacher to an executive director of a TV show? Well, if you haven't noticed, teachers like to control things, <laughs> <laughs> like classrooms uh -huh. and what goes on. And uh, uh, actually, uh, um, it gave me the opportunity to, uh, to do a lot more than work with a classroom of students. So I could work with, this way I could work with a community, I can work with great organizations like Child Advocates and United Way. Uh, I could promote all sorts of things beyond the classroom. So um, it, it, um, it was um, a difficult, well, it was a challenging change because I had to learn about things like budgeting and money and business and technology. But um, again, if students realize that we all spend our lives learning, and this could be the kind of thing mm -hmm. that uh, young people would like to do is more television, um, more uh, media, because uh, everyone is getting wired into the internet and uh, uh, as we see in life, it's very um, technological. Mm -hmm. And it might be something they might be interested in doing when they grow up, mm -hmm. is to be an actor or someone behind the camera to help direct a show. So you have a couple stories that you're going to be reading to us. I do. And I must say that um, at night when I go home, mm -hmm. I don't turn on the television. Good for you. I actually open up a book because um, I, really, um, I really think that reading is a great exercise of the imagination. Of course, we raised our children um, with books. And I would, I would say that George and Willie uh, is one of the... Um, 
great shows that you should continue to watch, but be very careful uh, and choose the shows that you watch on TV because there's much more than television ahead of us. Uh, there's all sorts of connections with natures and, and nature and friends and family. So uh, be sure that you spend your time um, not watching TV, mm -hmm. even though that's a strange message. And using your imagination. Yes. And books help you use your imagination. They do. Yes. And um, particularly the ones that are um, aimed at uh, young people who um, are just learning to read. Mm -hmm. Lovely pictures, as so we'll see. So what book are you going to start? Well, the first one I'm going to read is called Fix It. And it is about television. And it is about um, what happens when the TV breaks down. Ah, so let's okay. take a look at Fix It. And you can see it's, uh, it's written and uh, illustrated by David McPhail. And you can see the first page will open to um, a, uh, a TV. And if you look carefully at the TV, you'll see that there are mice and cats. And they're playing right around the television set. And all of a sudden, on the next page, Emma woke up one morning, got up early to watch television. And we'll see a picture of Emma watching the TV or trying to watch the TV. But she finds out that the TV didn't work. Hmm, a problem. So Emma asked her mother to fix it. Hurry, Mom, she cried. Hurry. And of course, Mom gets up and Emma's mother tried to fix it. Hmm, but what did she find out? She couldn't fix the TV set. And I don't think Emma's going to be very happy about it. So Emma's father tried. And what happened with Emma's father? He couldn't fix it either. So he's perplexed what to do. So he called the fix-it man. Please hurry, he said. It's an emergency. Oh, my goodness. The TV doesn't work. The fix-it man came out right away. And um, he looks pretty well ready to fix it. He tried to fix the TV. Emma's mother and father tried to fix Emma because she wasn't happy at all. He, the father, her father blew up a balloon. But it popped, scared everybody. Her mother sang a song. So did the cat, talented cat. Her father pretended to be a horse. But Emma didn't feel like riding. Finally, her mother read her a book. Hmm, read it again, said Emma, when her mother had finished. And again, and again. Now, I'll read to Millie, said Emma. And she went to her room. Then her father found out what was wrong with the TV. I fixed it. I fixed it, he called. But Emma didn't come out of her room. She was too busy. And here she is reading to her cat and her doll. And that, my friends, is one reason why we love reading, because it really takes us away into stories, into our imagination. And it's a, a great way to enjoy ourselves, especially in a cold winter storm when maybe the power has gone out <laughs> and you're sitting and you're wondering what to do. Reading is great for wintertime. Yes, it yeah. is. And your second story? Well, our second story is, uh, is one that um, I actually read to our kids a lot. We loved, uh, we loved reading. And uh, as we raised our children, um, they loved hearing stories, and eventually they learned from the stories how to read. So the first, um, the first, we're reading the first chapter of Frog and Toad Together. And this is written by Arnold Lobel. And it's called The List. And it's a story that Frog and Toad have. They have many adventures. And this one starts with one morning... Toad sat in bed. I have many things to do, he said. I will write them down, all down on a list so that I can remember them. Toad wrote on a piece of paper, a list of things to do today. Then he wrote, wake up. 
I've done that, said Toad, and he crossed out, wake up. That's the fun thing about having a list. You can cross things off. Then Toad wrote other things on the paper. Eat breakfast, get dressed, go to Frog's house, take walk with Frog, eat lunch, take nap, play games with Frog, eat supper, and go to sleep. That's quite a list. I'm not sure he can do everything. So, there, said Toad, now my day is all written down. He got out of bed and had something to eat. Then Toad crossed out, eat breakfast. Toad took his clothes out of the closet and put them on. Then he crossed out, get dressed. Toad put the list in his pocket. He opened the door and walked out into the morning. Soon Toad was at Frog's front door, and he took the list from his pocket and crossed out, go to Frog's house. Toad knocked at the door. Hello, said Frog. Look at my list of things to do, said Toad. And, oh, said Frog, that's a nice list. To Toad said, my list tells me that we go for a walk. All right, said Frog, I'm ready. So Frog and Toad went on a long walk. Then Toad took his list from his pocket again and crossed out, take walk with Frog. Just then there was a strong wind. It blew the list out of Toad's hand. The list blew high up into the air. And what do you think happened? Help, cried Toad. My list is blowing away. What will I do without my list? Hurry, said Frog. We'll run and catch it. No, shouted Toad. I cannot do that. Why not, asked Frog. Well, because running after my list is not one of the things that I do that I wrote on my list of things to do. So Frog instead ran after the list. He ran over hills and swamps, blew, but the list blew on and on. And at last, Frog came back to Toad. I am so sorry, gasped Frog, but I couldn't catch your list. Blah, said Toad. I cannot remember any of the things that were on my list of things to do. I will just have to sit here and do nothing, said Toad. Toad sat and did nothing. Frog sat with him. After a long time, Frog said, Toad, it's getting dark. What should we be doing? Should we be going to sleep now? Go to sleep, shouted Toad. That is the last thing on my list. So Toad wrote on the ground with a stick, go to sleep. Then he crossed out, go to sleep. There, said Toad, now my day is all crossed out. I'm glad, said Frog. And Frog and Toad went right to sleep. And... That's something to do in case you ever write a list <laughs> and lose it. You know that the end of the day is always going to end with going to sleep. And hopefully you get enough sleep because it's important for young boys and girls to really get their sleep. And I was just hearing that boys and girls of your age need to have between 10 and 12 hours of sleep a night. So it's very important that when you get tired, it's time to go to sleep. You're going to take us on a tour of Nevada the County, County Television. Television, NCTV. So could you please go ahead and, well, before, and show us? Yeah, I will. But before I do that, I want to be sure to invite the boys and girls to come to Nevada County Television because you can also take your own tour here mm -hmm. with your parents and see what a television station is like. But we're going to go now and see a video about the uh, television station and the first part I'm going to describe because there's a lot of noise that we've cut out of the video uh, and in place of that will be my voice. So here we are with Bill Carquist, our engineer, and he's showing you the control room. And this is Bill. He's a video engineer and he knows how to run everything, at least everything here at NCTV. He's showing you now our switcher which chooses and does all sorts of special effects. So now we're looking at a monitor which shows the special effects and we're looking at a character generator. And right now I'm going to ask the control room to bring up uh, characters 
Now you're looking at what a character generator does. It does all of the words on the screen that you're seeing, welcome to George and Willie's world. And someone now is going to remove that. Oh, it's going to show you Coraline Host, who, Coraline Mapes, who is our host um, of the show. But let's go back to Bill and remove the character uh, text from the screen. And so you can see more of the control room. We have four cameras. We have a preview screen. We have a final screen. And actually running a television show takes about four to five people to be a production crew. And we can do more than that, and we can do less than that. But we have, on George and Willie's show, we have uh, four people in the studio, and we have three people in the control room. So we have actually seven people plus three of us on camera. So there are about 10, not counting George and Willie. So if you add the dogs, there's about 12 uh, beings on TV for the George and Willie show. How many screens? I've been seeing quite a few different screens. Some are the computer monitors and some are little TV screens. How right. many screens that come up with different uh, pictures? We have TV? many things operating at once because as we're filming this show, it's not going out live. What you're seeing live on TV now might be something entirely different. So not only are we producing shows, but we're airing them and we have two channels now, channel 11 and channel 17 for government. And Bill is really the brains behind the outfit. And he'll be the first to admit that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Bill is quite a humorist as well as a very talented, uh, generous video engineer. And he devotes most of his days to being here at the station. Hmm. So we're looking at a playlist now, which means we can go home on the weekends and have things play. And we should bring up the sound now for Honor. So please um, be sure that right Honor here. is talking now. It's got and an edit program come. called Adobe Premiere Pro. And the Macs, you have Final Cut Pro 6. And also iMovie. And we also have photo capturing, these scanners. We can put these photos on computer and import them onto editing software and make shows with them video slideshows. This is our studio. We have six high definition cameras, or sorry, four high definition cameras. One's on a jib, so we can have smoother shots, sort of like that. They're all Canon GL2s, and we have a stage. This is where all the action takes place. This is the place where everything on the TV everything you can see on the TV. And we have microphone inputs in the back. We have many lights, plenty of them, so we can light up the studio, make it easier for the cameras to see the action. Well, that's exciting. And boys and girls at home, I really have, if you are interested in coming and getting your own tour of NCTV, or if you would like to be an audience for George and Willie's World, I told you I would tell you the addresses. That is, you can either email uh, George, spell out George and Willie at yahoo.com. You can write us to George and Willie's World at 235 South Auburn Street, Grass Valley, California, 95945. And if you um, would like to have a craft that you think that other boys and girls would like to be interested in learning how to do, please write us or email us, and we might just have you on our show. And you could come on and teach all of the boys and girls at home, George, Willie, Mrs. Krantz and myself, how to make that craft. So just give us um, an email or write us a letter and, and we'd love to have you on. If you've missed any of our George and Willie's World episodes, we now have a DVD and it's our first official DVD. It has eight different programs on it two DVDs inside. Let me do that for you. I think I got it. Oh, good. Open it up. 
Uh, oh, they that's have great. they have um, George and Willie on the inside on the D. They are wonderful, and you will find these to be checked out at the Grass Valley Library, at Madeline Helling Library in Nevada City, the um, Sierra Nevada Children's Services, and also First Five at. Hennessy School, 235 South Auburn Street. So these can be checked out at any of those locations. We also want to thank Richard Monroe for doing a fantastic job in putting all this together and in developing a very attractive format yes. and, and uh, the first five commission for helping to produce it. So it's been a, it's been a, a, a team effort. Yes, and yeah. it's wonderful. So I'm glad to see these are out. These are some wonderful programs and some shows on the back. So please check them out and tell us how you like them. So boys and girls, we are almost out of time. So I'd like to make sure that you listen to lots of stories, do your job, and have fun playing. I would like to, I'd like to mention one more thing. Go ahead. We have some time. Uh, good, because uh, Nevada County Television here in Nevada City really is available to um, young uh, students uh, starting in uh, middle school. Lyman Gilmore um, Middle School has uh, uh, a team of students that come over and work and that's where some of our interns start about the seventh and eighth grade. So in case there are families at home who um, have seventh or eighth graders or high school students, uh, you can come and become an intern and after school. I mean we have interns right now working to uh, produce this show so uh, it's available to middle schoolers and to uh, high schoolers to come and learn the technology of, of television and even have your own show. Thank you very much, Mr. Sitzer. I'm You're welcome, Mrs. Mapes yeah. and Mrs. Kranz. Yeah. It's been fun. And so yes. whenever you see a George and Willie's World, you'll know that Mr. Sitzer is in the background telling the control booth how to run the show. Thanks again for joining us, boys and girls. Until next time.